my name is Jen Spinney. Um, I'm on the Diego team. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise out of Seattle, Washington. And I'm Andrew Edgar. I work for IBM out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, so as you can see, the Diego team is a multi-company team. Um, we're also partially remote. Andrew and I are both not in San Francisco, where the majority of development on the Diego team happens, but we make it work still. Um, we do pair programming for everything that we do, um, just like most teams on Cloud Foundry. Um, so with the remote development, we end up using a lot of screen sharing tools and stuff like that, and it generally works out pretty well. Um, the Diego team is responsible for the new runtime of Cloud Foundry. Um, we're not going to get really into the details of what Diego is, but there were a couple talks earlier today that hopefully you went to and learned a bit more about uh, Diego in. Um, Andrew and I both did uh, the Cloud Foundry Dojo in June of last year. Um, this is a six-week program where you're in person with a team doing pair programming, working on an actual project inside Cloud Foundry. So for us, that was Diego. Um, and then we both continued on Diego after doing our dojos there as well. And we've been on Diego ever since. So this talk um, is about the testing strategies that we use on Diego. Um, I think we do a lot of really interesting testing for the Diego project to make sure that it's a solid um, release when we do say that we have a new release of Diego. Um, so we're going to talk about the different categories of testing that we do, the different scopes of testing. Um, we're going to talk about continuous integration, um, or CI for short. Um, that's the entire uh, pipeline um, to uh, certify something as being able to be integrated back into the master branch. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about versioning, um, because we make certain guarantees that um, when, you, uh, when you do an upgrade from one stable version to the current version that we're deploying, that that upgrade has no issues with it, and everything um, is smooth in the actual deploy. We're not going to talk about Diego itself. Um, for this talk, we're going to kind of consider Diego as a black box system. It's just a complicated, distributed um, service that needs to be tested. Um, we're not going to go into the nitty gritty details of what Diego is, itself is actually doing. We're also not going to be talking about the details of Concourse itself. Um, we use Concourse as our CI pipeline uh, software, um, and we think it's pretty cool, but the point of this talk um, can be applied to any CI system that you're using. It doesn't have to be Concourse. So we're not going to get into the details of Concourse here. So if you ever go to the Pivotal, Pivotal office in San Francisco and you uh, walk to the Diego area, you'll see a big monitor with this huge diagram on it. And if you've ever used Concourse before, you know that the little uh, yellow rectangles are pulsating, giving you the sense that something exciting is happening, something's going on. Um, those are the actual active jobs that are running. Um, each of these rectangles represents a job. Um, and the pipeline generally goes left to right. So we start on the left, and that the jobs that pass on the left then trigger further jobs and further jobs, and things move along in a pipeline. Um, a common reaction when people see this diagram or see it um, in San Francisco is just to sit back and go, oh my god, this thing is huge. Um, and we get that reaction even from other people inside Cloud Foundry. Like We have a pretty big, beefy pipeline. And this is just our critical path. We have lots of other um, jobs that are running in the background and that are not considered critical path um, for actually deploying um, or releasing. Um, and we actually have like at least, I think, three more jobs since this screenshot was taken. I think even five more jobs. Um, so we have a pretty beefy pipeline. Um, and so this talk is going to go through that pipeline and kind of um, dive into what these different blocks are doing and why we consider them part of the critical path. Um, just as a general overview of how we do development on the team, um, the very first thing that happens when we have a story or a bug um, is we see it in the top of the backlog. Um, the pair takes a look at it, um, marks it as being started, understands the requirements, the acceptance criteria of the story, um, and then starts actually doing the uh, testing and development to get a fix for it. Once they're ready to go, they do a git push. Um, this pushes to the, they push to the develop branch of Diego release, and from there it gets automatically picked up by our CI pipeline. And the devs just walk away at that point. Um, assuming everything just you know, went fine with their change, they just go on and start the next um, bug or story. In the meantime, the pipeline starts up. 
Um, so now you have this left to right progression um, where things go through one step and then the next step and the next step. Um, and if there are problems along the way, one of these uh, things will turn red and then we'll have to pay some attention to what went wrong. Um, and then um, this is mostly automated. Um, there are a couple steps in here um, where the PM has to come in and validate um, you know, that we actually want to ship uh, a release or something like that. But other than that, from the dev's point of view, they're done um, and it's, their fix is at some point going to make it into a, a final release. Um, one core um, uh, principle of the Cloud Foundry teams in general is test-driven development, or TDD for short. Just basically the idea that you write the tests before you write the code. Um, specifically, you write a failing test first, um, because if you don't write a failing test, it could be that you know if you write the code first and then you write a test afterwards and the test passes, maybe you just wrote a bad test in the beginning. Maybe the test would have passed in the beginning. Um, it also helps you dictate, um, it makes you um, clear on what the uh, intended behavior is so you don't get biased by your own implementation later and you shift your thinking about what the desired behavior should be based on what work you've actually done. Um, so this applies to everything we do. Um, the basic local development workflow, um, first you start off writing a unit test, you write a little bit of code to implement that unit test, to make that unit test pass, um, and you keep iterating on that, writing more and more unit tests, um, and then uh, you might need uh, some uh, component level or cross component level tests for the feature you're adding, so you might add those, um, and then make the, those pass as well. Um, and while you're doing this, um, you want to make sure that all the tests are passing, all the other tests are passing, so you're not breaking something else. Um, uh, and then once you've finished doing all your local development and local testing, um, that's when you can do a git push. And then that's when you walk away and the pipeline takes care of the rest. Um, uh, so throughout this talk, we're going to use the example of adding a new feature to Diego. We're going to step back in time and imagine that we don't have crash events in the BBS. So the BBS has this events endpoint that someone can hit and see all the events that are happening on the system. And we're going to imagine that we don't yet have an event type for crashing. Um, and so crashing events happen when the app instance actually crashes, and we want to make sure this gets flowed through the system correctly when we add it to a, the BBS endpoint. Um, there's also the idea of acceptance. There's all this automated testing and automated um, verification, but we also have some manual acceptance that the PM does um, to make sure that what actually went in is the correct um, behavior according to the story that was implemented. Um, we also use the acceptance environment um, for doing acceptance testing um, to make sure that in a real Diego deployment a, with multiple VMs on AWS, things are actually working correctly. That same environment can be used by the PM to go in and verify that um, the code that we added is actually doing the correct thing according to the acceptance criteria. Um, so let's start actually looking at the pipeline itself. This is um, the very first thing that gets kicked off is Inigo and the unit tests. Uh, the unit tests, um, talked a little bit about them already. Um, they're testing the smallest level of functionality. This is where um, a lot of our edge case code um, gets tested. Um, usually a yeah, unit might be a function or maybe a little bit bigger or smaller than a function, but it's one single unit of work. Um, we also have um, component level testing. So, um, for example, in the BBS, you might have an events package um, inside, the event, inside the BBS code. And so for a unit test, you would just import the events package, test the function you want directly. Um, so here you would make a fake crashing app instance, for example, uh, and then verify that the events endpoint um, reported the crashing event correctly. Um, but for the component level test, you'll actually compile the BBS um, executable itself and go in from um, the point of view of like an end user of the BBS executable. So you'll um, uh, invoke it with command line arguments and stuff like that. Uh, in this example, um, we might not need to actually write a component level test because we might already have some tests around events and maybe this is a little too nitty gritty. It's kind, of, it's kind of on the line, but most of these component level tests are just kind of smoke tests to make sure that all the different um, packages and stuff are actually wired in correctly, um, but we're not doing extensive testing at this level. That's, that's more at the unit test level. 
Um, we also have a, a test we, we call Anigo. Um, Anigo is for doing cross-component testing to make sure that if we have, for example, a BBS and an auctioneer that they're communicating correctly. Um, this is meant to be a really lightweight test suite, um, so it's all running in a single container where all of our different Diego processes are running on a different port, um, and they all know about each other, but we don't need a full Bosch deployment. Um, and uh, so for this example, maybe, um, we would have um, the route emitter might be listening to the event stream from the BBS, um, and we want to verify that that communication happens correctly. So when the BBS now reports this new crash event type, the route emitter listens to that and does the correct action. Maybe it drops the route or um, whatever the expected action is for the route emitter to take. Um, the cool thing about this is it's all just running in a container. So you can easily move it and run it where you want. We happen to actually use Concourse itself to run these containers. Um, so we usually are running a local Concourse on localhost. Um, so you can just run it directly there, or you can run it on our AWS Concourse instance that we use for our actual CI pipeline. Um, you can also just direct it at some other team's CI pipeline if you don't want to deal with the resources yourself. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty nice to be able to have that flexibility and just run it anywhere. and It's just easily contained. All right, so um, up till now, we've been talking about uh, a bunch of tests that run kind of in one small little container or on your uh, local environment. Um, but now we want to test uh, a little more expansive. We want to test on a full-blown uh, deployed uh, CF and Diego environment. So the next steps after uh, Inigo and, and unit tests have passed is the creating of the Bosch releases. So we need to create uh, a Bosch release from CF and, and a Bosch release from Diego with the current um, deployment branch. Or from uh, CF release, we, we get the, um, uh, what is it, runtime? Runtime passed? Runtime, Runtime passed um, version of, of CF release uh, to be able to get ready to deploy it into uh, our acceptance environment. So one of the things is uh, we have one main acceptance environment uh, in our CI pipeline, and that environment is called, uh, right now, called Ketchup. And so part of deploying to catch up is, is we need to deploy new CF, uh, a new CF release and a new Diego release, uh, but we're also running a bunch of unit tests against that. We're running a bunch of different types of tests. So we wanna make sure that we don't, um, don't interfere with running tests while we're redeploying uh, the environment. So we, we have a step in the, in the pipeline which is called candidate, which kind of locks the catch up environment. So we're waiting until there's nothing running and we're ready to be able to deploy a fresh environment to be able to kick off all the tests. So now we've got the catch-up environment. It's all ready to be uh, deployed. We've got nothing else running. Uh, we've got some additional um, periodic tests that run against our catch-up environment. Um, and so they're not running, so we're ready to be able to deploy. So the next two steps are deploy CF and deploy Diego. So first thing, now we've got everything's deployed. Now the, the deploy steps may have caught some problems. If we've checked in some code that uh, maybe a change to the manifest or manifest generation and now the manifest doesn't generate, then maybe our deployment will fail and we'll catch that early. But now we have deployed everything to our catch-up environment and we're assuming everything's ready to go to start testing. So the first thing we do is run a bunch of smoke tests. Now the smoke tests are just a really simple set of tests. Get back to smoke tests. They're just a simple, simple set of tests to do you know, minimal testing. So we wanna make sure we can push an app, the app can run, and everything is all running fine. So this will be able to catch us if we d have done something severely wrong, like we've checked in something or we've deleted, uh, deleted some code so that nothing runs very well or we can't push an app. So uh, assuming that the smoke test ran, we now move on to an acceptance test. Now we've got a couple of different acceptance tests. We've got the, the CATs, which are the CF acceptance tests, and they, are, they live in the uh, Cloud Foundry um, repository. 
and then we have the Windows acceptance test because we want to run a set of tests against uh, Windows endpoints or Windows cells. So what are the acceptance tests? Well, all the acceptance tests are written from the perspective of the end user. So we're going to run a bunch of tests using all the CFCLI to be able to make sure everything runs as a user would see it so that it acts as we want. Um, so we're solely using the CFCLI. Um, the cats, as they're defined in CF, can run either against DEAs or against Diego. And so for us, obviously, we run it against Diego. Um, there are a bunch of tests that can run uh, specifically to DEAs or specific to Diego. We've got a bunch of tests in there around uh, SSH, being able to SSH into containers. That's something that only runs against Diego cells. So we are running our cats and our watts against you know, the cells that are running up for Diego in the catch-up environment. So a reason I might want to write another acceptance test is, for example, in our example where we had the, the new crash event, if we didn't have a test that validated that I could do a CF events and see the crash event, then maybe I would want to write a new test. Right? But since we already have that test, we can now validate that we're getting the events back as we expect the user to, uh, the event to occur to them. And so we're just really validating that from a user point of view, everything's working as, as it should be. Okay. So one of the other major pieces, and, and Jen talked about it a bit uh, earlier, was uh, our validation to make sure that we can upgrade. And so we have a special test, suite of tests called the Diego Upgrade Spillity Test. And these are all run in parallel with the mainline uh, inside Ketchup, although they aren't run against the Ketchup environment. So what are, the, what are the dusts? So they're ensuring that we have upgradability, right? So what we do is against a Bosch Lite environment, we will deploy a baseline. So that is an original release uh, that worked with CF and worked with Diego. So an original version at a specific, specific point in time. And now the goal is we will push an app and have that app running at all times. And then we start a piecewise upgrade to the most current, current environment. Now, so some of the things we're going to be able to do is we're going to uh, upgrade CF to the current environment update um, Diego in a piecewise fashion. So we'll update, say, just a single cell. We'll stop a cell, make sure things are still running. Or we'll then upgrade just the brain components, like the CC bridge, or some of the other components within Diego. So at each step, we want to make sure that that app that we pushed at the very start is continual, continually routable. Well, there are some minor exceptions when we know that it won't be routable, like when we're upgrading CF. But in general, most of the time, we want to make sure that we can still route uh, to that application. And then also, at each step of the upgrade process, we will also do a simple smoke test to make sure that everything is still running as we expected it. Um, one of the issues with this, uh, this test is that it takes about an hour and a half to run. So it's good that it's running when all the other tests are running, because it kind of ends up finishing at about the same time as everything else. Um, it, Although it's very long, it has caught a, caught a lot of uh, smaller errors that we found that we've never found in any other test. So it has proven to be very useful. And it, it does ensure that when we release, we know that somebody can upgrade from an older version of Diego to the newest. Okay. So now, say everything's passed and we're all really happy, we get to the deliver state. And when, this is an automatic step in, in the process that marks all the stories that were involved in this candidate build and marks them as delivered. Now that's an indication to our PM, Eric, that now he can start validating, make sure that uh, he's got an environment in Ketchup that has been deployed up to, this up to this release, and he can validate whether those stories are actually truly working as he thinks with the acceptance criteria. So he'll be able to run his acceptance tests against that environment and make sure that all the, uh, all the tests are or all the stories are ready to go. So if Eric has run his tests and feels that it's ready to go, there's now a manual step that he will click to say, OK, we're ready to ship. And this is marks 
the release as ready to go and ready to be shipped and, and committed uh, and released to everybody else. So we do have a step that creates a, um, creates a draft release of, of the new Diego, so it'll mark it as a new release version, and it'll be in draft state, so then Eric can do things like write the, uh, write the release notes and get it ready to uh, be published. And then um, as we were developing, all the developers have gone on and started doing a bunch of development, we have a step that will automatically merge things back into the develop branch from this, this release now. Okay, so that was really the main pipeline of our CI. We've got now everything through and, and released. Now we do have a bunch of other tests that are going on kind of in, in either different environments or at um, a periodic step, and one of them is called Vizini. Now Vizini is a set of tests written by the PMs, and it's, again, an automated suite to test uh, acceptance. So Eric, or, or the previous PMs of Diego, started writing these set of tests that validate functionality, and what we do is we just run them every 30 minutes against the catch-up environment to make sure that, you know, acceptance, we haven't broken anything along the way, right? We've, we've Develop, developed and produced new, um, new functionality, we've got to make sure that all the old functionality still works. So that, that's another set of acceptance tests that, that is run periodically. Now we usually run that in CI against the acceptance environment, but we do now have scripts in our Diego release to be able to run that against, say, a Bosch Lite environment in, in development, so we can also run those there, or generate a uh, Bosch deployment so we can run it as an errand in, in any really Diego development. All right, so there is another piece called our benchmarking. Now, if you were around earlier and you went to uh, Jim and, and Luan's talk, he, they talked about performance and performance benchmarking. We do run against a different environment after we've shipped. After we've hit the ship or deliver, we now have a stable environment and we want to run performance benchmarks against it. And so this is the step where we uh, kick off a deployment and we deploy against a whole fresh new environment and we run a set of benchmarking tests. And so these tests run probably after every deli delivery and to make sure that everything's still running, you know, performant. Like we haven't introduced a, a performance bottleneck uh, with some of our new code and make sure that everything's still, you know, working as we hoped. So, looking again at our, our pipeline, it's pretty massive. Um, we, we said we do have 51 jobs in the pipeline. You know, we, we do have six, if not more, Bosch environments that we are deploying to. Um, you know, is that too much? And because we know flakes happen, um, there, there are a bunch of external dependencies. You know, we depend a little bit on AWS when we do deployments. We depend on GitHub being available, Docker Hub being available to test all the Docker tests. So. There is flakes, right? We do have, you know, when we pair in the morning and decide who's going to work, we always have a pair that's their job is the build czar, right? Their job is they have to watch this pipeline all day. And some days, that's a full-time job, right? So we um, want to make sure it's, it's always a balancing act between, you know, how much testing we're doing and how much testing we're doing in the CI and getting things out, right? So sometimes... Because we have issues, you know, it, it can take away at least a pair from being able to do productive work because the, all they're doing is watching the, watching the build. So we know it's a balancing act, but in general, we want to think that, you know, our top priority as a Diego development team is to produce, you know, top quality builds, right? And that's why we have all this testing, right? So we want to balance between how much testing we're doing and delivering code. And I think we're leaning towards let's test as much as we can to make sure that our, our releases are reliable, can be upgraded, and perform as we expect. So, you know, I hope we've shown that that's, you know, some top of mind of, of the development team is, is to make sure that our releases are, are very reliable. So I think that's about it, and maybe we can open up to questions. You're going to have to yell because we have the microphone. But if there's any questions, yes? Uh, 
So that's a qu the question was around um, how do we organize for writing all the other unit tests like the the um, the integration test, the benchmark test, and, and et cetera. And a lot of the times we'll have a story to do some development around writing some benchmarking or improving the benchmarking. Uh, originally when we, we wrote the benchmark test, we, we had tests all around how the bulk loops work. Um, and then we needed to add some more additional simulation of, of having a bunch of rep and the rep load. So that was actually an, another story and a, a, whole, a pair would pick up that story to be able to develop it. And so that's how we usually do it. If we need to write additional integration tests, we'll, we'll do things like that. It'll be part of the pipeline as, or part of the backlog as stories to do. There's also some of the, some of the um, integration tests are also just expected as part of a regular story. Um, so it's like, if you're working on a certain story, it's definitely expected to write unit tests, but you might, you have to think a bit about whether you're supposed to be writing tests at other levels as well. So we have dedicated stories for specific test suites like the benchmark BBS test suite, but a lot of these other things like Inigo and these other test suites, um, it's expected that as you're doing development, you create tests for that as well. Yeah. So, um, so the question was about how we actually trace a story throughout the actual pipeline and then associate that story, like how we actually auto deliver in Pivotal Tracker in this case um, when we hit that deliver state in, uh, in Concourse. And that's just, I think the resource in Concourse is called the tracker resource. So it's already, we're just using that as it exists. It's already out there, so you can use it already. Yes? <laughs> the, so the question was, have, have we run into any problems with Concourse itself? And, and you know, every once in a while we do. You know, if, if you do get a lot of um, failing tests or, or failing jobs, sometimes we run out of resources on some of the Concourse workers. But that's, you know, and, and that's part of what the builds our team does or, or pair will do is look and sometimes we've had to just restart uh, the workers, redeploy the workers in, in Concourse. Uh, we try to keep, keep up with a pretty recent version of Concourse and, and a lot of the times the, the Concourse team is, is right in the, the San Francisco office. So if we have a big problem, we'll go ask them. <laughs> Pardon me? Uh, we have six workers. Um, so for Diego, we just run, all our tests are just running against um, AWS because um, we're supposed, that, that level of testing is kind of outside the scope of Diego's responsibility to figure out. That's sort of, I think, more of, um, I don't know, maybe um, Bosch level testing to make sure that it works correctly on the different environments. Um, we're, but we are, our environment is just a Bosch environment on AWS. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer is no. The Bosch team. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so we aren't really planning to expand it. I mean, our release is supposed to be certified as, it, well, it ran within an AWS environment. The Bosch team definitely confirms that things run and deploy in other environments. We are working with, you know, some other teams. IBM, we're going to spin up a performance test against a software environment. So we do have, you know, we do work with other external teams to, to do a bit of that testing. Yeah, so the question was, uh, why is benchmarking done after the release? And, and we want to make sure that we're not testing against, you know, things that may not even work, right? So we want to make sure that we're doing a benchmark against something that is very close to be released. 
right? We want to say, okay, this was a candidate, everything passed, we're ready to go, we're going to run the benchmark test against to validate at the final step. Okay. Anything else? We're out of time? Yep, we're right at time, so that's good. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.